15 most powerful dragons in fiction. And uh, I gotta tell you, Goose, by the stuff we've been seeing at SCPs and the stuff you see around the world, I'm gonna say that uh, you could probably see some of these dragons in, in real life. In real life? In real life. Right now, outside my window, if That's I look, I might see one of 15 different dragons. Well, you know, it's so big, you wouldn't even be able to tell. What if we're living on a dragon right now? And we just don't know it. Is this is this dinosaur Earth theory? Uh, the theory that the Earth is shaped like a dinosaur. Is it? <laughs> this is the first time I've heard this. Yes, it's just like flat Earth theory, but it's a dinosaur theory. Perfect segue into the starting of the sentence. <laughs> what if? Uh, what if, John? Right. All dragons look just like clouds. Oh my god! You never know. Right. <laughs> or like, you ever seen those like really straight streams in the air sometimes that look like clouds? Some people say that that comes from jets. I say it comes from aliens. dragons. Aliens. Oh, dragons. Dragon aliens. Uh, yeah. Right? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> All right. So let's see here. Uh, let's see. Got what, the what? 15 most powerful. Okay. And, and, and I think everybody's going to... Well, most likely everybody is going to recognize uh, the name of this one. Smog. 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 Uh, number, and, uh, number 15. He is uh, from uh, The Hobbit. Jokin, Rokin, Rokin's Tolkien's The Hobbit. That hundreds of years old. Sounds right. So he's, uh, he's hundreds of uh, years old. Uh, he came from the mountains of, of the north. North of I what? I think there was a song about this, right? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. Something about them being on fire, I think. Right? I'd appreciate it if we could... Get a little MIDI of that song <laughs> and play it. <laughs> Although it probably doesn't exist. Oh, all right. Uh, it was last of the great dragons in Middle Earth. Smog coveted the enormous wealth amassed by the dwarven kingdom of, you know, Erebor. these these people. Erebor. Okay, Erebor. In and the mountain. lonely mountain. He seized the mountain and the many treasures inside of it, killing many dwarves and taking down the entire army of Erebor. Not content with this, Smog scorched the area surrounding the Lonely Mountain into a wasteland that fittingly became known as the Desolation of Smog. Smog hoarded the Lonely Mountain's treasures all to himself for over 200 years. Since no army in the Middle Earth dared to face the terrifying dragon, even with the company of dwarves managed to sneak into the mountain, he laid waste almost the entirely of the late town before his defeat at the hands of the bard of the bowmen. Now, was this in the book slash movies? I don't know. Because I missed I've these never ones. actually seen the movies. <laughs> wow, that makes two of us. Uh, he looks cool, and he's voiced by Benedict Cumberbatch. So. Is he? Yep. He actually talks in the movie. Okay. Well, that's pretty cool. So, Bendy's an enormous and powerful dragon smog was covered in an impenetrable armor and immune to most weapons and was strong enough to crush stone. He was able to breathe fire hard enough to melt metal and his very body was imbued with fire, glowing in the dark like a furnace. He was the largest dragon of the Third Age and bore such nicknames as the Magnificent and the Tyrannical and perhaps the best of all, the chiefest and greatest of calamities. The chiefest. That's a new word. I don't now, think that exists. I guess they're saying he's like the 15th most powerful yeah, because he's, he's most weapons the cannot weakest. defeat him. And he's defeated by a bard, though, so that's why he's 15th. Yeah, I mean, like, bards are pretty open. Not sure how he did it, but, right. the, I mean, pretty good for a bard. probably just him a song. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen it, so that's why I'm going to assume what happened. We should watch it. We should. Number Next 14. Time. Oh, heck, King Ghidorah. It's, I guess he's a dragon, technically, yeah. Oh, yeah. Three headed, From uh, Godzilla? Yeah, three-headed dragon kaiju of the Godzilla universe. He's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with the king of all monsters on multiple occasions and has emerged on top more than once. His mm -hmm. name comes from the Japanese word for Hydra, a wicked golden three-headed dragon from outer space. He's from out of this world. Dang, dude. King Ghidorah has destroyed civilizations. Uh, I don't like that one. I'm going to take that back. He's not from out of this world. It didn't sound as good out loud in my head, you know. I, I just feel like I could do better. And I feel like from now on I'm going to strive to do better for the people out there. Uh, I just want to make this statement heard and uh, vote for me uh, <laughs> on election day. 
Is this like some kind of election campaign um, I don't know about, Goose? Continuing on, uh, several re- plan- <laughs> several <laughs> citizens. He's destroyed civilizations on several planets for unknown reasons unknown. He's tried to destroy Earth and devour humanity, but was defeated by a team of three monsters. He's also known for causing extinction of the dinosaurs during the Cretaceous period, although he would also be betrayed as being the guardian monster to humanity on one occasion. What occasion mm. was that? I don't know. It said that he was, his purpose is to destroy worlds. Who would he fight against then? See, so yeah, this is really interesting to me, but I, I'll, yeah, I'll we'll never know. Do like, some further research on this. King Ghidorah attacked Venus thousands of years ago, wiping out the indigenous civilization and rendering Venus a wasteland. During his attack on Japan, he leveled the entire cities effortlessly with his gravity beams. Godzilla and Rodan were the only ones to defeat him by breaking the mind control the Zelians had over the monster. The battle ended when King Ghidorah flew back into space. So, there was a, a recent uh, movie about Godzilla. Was this the same guy? Yeah. Uh, I was thinking so. I like that. You should see it. Yeah, I did. Oh wait, we watched yeah. it together. Um, oh my! Right, I can't believe what I'm hearing. <laughs> and you should see it again. <laughs> see how it is. All right, so uh, Valerian, the Black Dread, a song of ice and fire. Now I'm not sure how any of these sounds be familiar. More powerful than is this uh, from Game of Thrones? Ghidorah, but is it? Sounds like a familiar title. I think that's see. a book. Uh, so Valerian, also named the Black Dread was one of the three greatest dragons of the Agon Targaryen. Tar- Tar- oh, we're so good at pronouncing. Yeah. Well, I mean, fantasy I, words are I very also tricky. known fittingly as Aegon Aegon the Conqueror in George R.R. R. Martin's The Song of Ice and Fire series. Valerian is his and his brethren were used to conquer most of Westeros during the okay, War that of is Conquest. The he was the largest of all the Targaryen dragons. His fire and skills were both black as night, hence his nickname. His wingspan was so enormous, entire towns would be bathed in shadow as he took flight, and his jaws were so wide they could swallow a mammoth whole. His fangs were as long as bastard swords, according to legend. Riding on Balerion, Aegon was able to conquer six of the seven kingdoms of Westeros and establish the ruling Targaryen dynasty that would last for over 300 years. Balerion was so powerful and so terrifying to his enemies, he is one of the few dragons on the list to die from old age, a rarity for dragons in fantasy stories. He died peacefully at around 200 years old. What's what's the... So I'm guessing this is like the prequel story to Game of Thrones, because I think in actual Game of Thrones they had like three dragons with the uh, Khal- yeah, well, Khaleesi, he, he I had, think. Bro- he, he said his brothers, remember? Yeah, but this set up... One of three great dragons. Hmm. Right. I would not know, though. Cause, um... I've only ever seen the two seasons. <laughs> and then some memes online. Apparently the last season wasn't too good. From what I hear. Now, I don't know if this would be King Ghidorah, though. And it's pretty low on the list. So I'm, I'm uh, excited to see what the others are. Right. So we're on number, th- number 12. Number 12. Oh, okay. Video game stuff now. Kral Katorik from Guild Wars. Good enough. <laughs> good Kral Katorik, Elder Crystal Dragon. That sounds cool. Guild Wars. Uh, thousand feet tall. Wings blown at the sun. That's going to be, I think, a common factor from here on out. <laughs> right. In fact, before the work from hibernation, it was widely believed to be a mountain. The, okay. the, the greatest, uh, you know, quote I can remember from is from the movie 300 is when they're saying that their arrows will blot out the sun. And they said, then we shall fight in the shade. <laughs> that was that was good. That was that was good. Also, um, I don't think I had anything to do with this. Exactly. No. No, but... Uh, but I liked the enthusiasm. I liked the quote. Keep it up. I'm going to need you to quote some more for me. All right. As okay. I continue to read. So uh, get that brain ready. Uh, his breath has the power to corrupt anything living it touches, turning plants, animals, and elementals into branded. Uh, that's, that's pretty powerful. Twisted, crystalline shadows of the former selves. Terrible storms. Black clouds. Lightning surround the elden, elder dragon's body. When it flies, crocodile is associated with the element 
of crystal and it can also become a hurricane and a sandstorm. One of the five elder dragons uh, wakes up every 10,000 years to consume all magic in the world before going back into hibernation. The elder dragons are akin to primordial force or an unstoppable natural disaster like an earthquake. He's described as being 20 times larger than the dragon Glint. I don't know who that is though. And responsible for the death, uh, death to Snaff, one of the original members of the Destiny's Edge. So, what it sounds like with this guy is that he's kind of like uh, a Thanos. He brings balance to the world. I guess so people get too powerful with the magic. He comes hmm. up, he's like, "I'm gonna take that magic back," and he snaps his As fingers. All things should be. Yeah. Turns people <laughs> to crystal, and then he goes back to sleep. Now that's a topical reference, I think. Good, good. <laughs> Moving on. I don't have much to say about it. I don't. I don't play Guild Wars. You know, we I don't played know it a for lot. a little bit. I played it. Wait, is this Guild Wars one or two? It's this is Guild Wars probably one. one. Yeah, I played Guild Wars two. There was a dragon in that one. What kind of game is Guild Wars? It's an MMO. Okay. Did you ever fight this guy? No, but I watched my friend fight him. It took him about two minutes. So you basically fought him yourself. Is what you yeah, said. that's right. You basically killed him it's by pre- yourself. Pretty easy. With nothing but the starting weapon. Mm-hmm. Good. Level one. Good. Uh, okay, so number 11 is uh, Alduin. Uh, clearly not as powerful as Hingadora, because I, I killed Alduin level 18, all right? <laughs> wasn't Wait, that you, wasn't you, hard. You're telling me that you killed Alduin? He scales to your player, and I was level 18, and I, I, I killed him. He was an innocent boy. <laughs> Voiced by Winnie, no, voiced by Mario, wasn't it? I'm pretty what? sure. Yeah, he voiced by the guy who voiced Mario. Really? His name escapes me at the current moment. Martin. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Correct Indeed. me if I'm wrong. Alduin, the world eater, is the main antagonist of Skyrim and the Nordic god of destruction. Alduin is the firstborn of Akatosh, the most prominent and Adra? Adra it's a god. in the series and the dragon god of time. Using his powers to revive his long-dead dragon brethren, Alduin seeks to restore dragon rule of Mundus. I believe that's like the Earth. Right. I wouldn't know. He was defeated in ancient times only by the use of a special dragon shout to force him to land and an Elder Scroll to send him forward in time. Alduin regains his strength by devouring mortal souls in Sovereign Guard, the Nordic afterlife. He is invincible until the final battle of the game, and unlike other dragons, his soul cannot be absorbed by the dragonborn. At the end, it is implied that this is because Alduin cannot truly be defeated, since he is immortal, unending, and his destiny is to one day return to fulfill his destiny as the world eater. All right, so he's a god. Okay, so number 11 of 15 is a god. But you beat him at level 18. <laughs> yes, so easily. Is he truly a god? I just feel or like the King dragon Ghidorah one. could just step on him and that would be it. I mean, this is like a list of like the 15 most powerful dragons. And we've seen a dragon that can like destroy entire towns with fire. We've seen one that can summon hurricanes and sandstorms and turn people to crystal and absorb all the magic in the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, we... I mean, I guess we asked for it for the 15 most powerful dragons, but... And, and this one, all the only thing that makes him special is just he can't die. Yeah. What if he gets trapped in a cave? <laughs> if he gets trapped, he's there for all eternity. He's there for all eternity. He can't get out. If you're immortal, there's a 100% chance you'll get stuck <laughs> And That's right. For, under a cave rock I mean, forever. Somebody just has to track him, trap him in a cave and you're good to go. Yeah. I mean, what's the point of being immortal and trying to end the world if you're never strong enough to end the world? Well, I guess eventually everybody just be too lazy. Oh, uh, yeah. He'll just he'll just do it without anyone looking. Let's see. Number 10. This one is pretty cool. Korobas. Malazan, Book of the Fallen. Do you know what that is? I don't, but I want to read it now just because of this picture. He's like... Uh, for y'all that's uh, sitting at home that can't see this, uh, this dragon is like standing on top of a mountain, and he looks like he's like twice as high. He's like almost in space. Kind of white, kind of like skull face dragon. Uh, yeah, space dragon. Sure. I mean, like when he flies, he'll probably just end up dying because he can't breathe. Ubaris the older Tyrol dragon was the largest of the Illin, an ancient race of dragons in the ten-part Mazalan Book of the Fallen series. Ten books. You want to read that still? Perhaps. She, 
as a she. So, you know, don't get it twisted, all right? <laughs> she is also twisted. called the Eye of Abnegation. Yeah. <laughs> so many fantasy words. The center of the storm, where everything must die. She has the aspect of Odoteral, a magic nullifying reddish ore, which caused anti-magic, which led to all life around her to die instantly. The Malazan universe, she is the source of all sorcery. Okay, so she's the source of all sor sorcery, but she's anti-magic. Is that right? Yeah, you read that right. Okay. She has the aspect. That's a little confusing, but I'm sure it's explained in yeah, part so 4 through 9. Corbas was selected by the Elder Gods among the Grand Clan to be the Odoteral Dragon as a balance to all other dragons. So it's like the God Dragon. Or yes. the king dragon. Yes. As a result, all, all other dragons combined are not a match for her because of her aspect of Odoral. She cannot be killed with magic, but only by tooth and claw. The battle to try and kill her once she was freed summoned so many dragons to one place that the elder goddess Tayam began to manifest in the desert where they fought, almost destroying the mortal world. So I guess in this fantasy world, like if there's a lot of dragons... In one area, it starts to summon a god. Is what it's saying? I feel like she's not she's not immortal, though. So technically, Alduin could, <laughs> could beat her, even though he can't beat her. <laughs> Probably just has to wait till she dies of old age. It's just a sneak attack. It's all about that sneak attack. How much time does Alduin have to prepare? <laughs> right. It's like, it's all like, of time. It's like the old argument, it's who wins Superman or Batman. It's like, well, if Batman has time to prepare, then Batman. It's like, okay. He wins because he is Batman. <laughs> because he is Batman. Number nine. I think I've seen... And Caligon the Black. The Similarian. So, like, yeah. Not much is known about the ancient and mysterious and Caligon the Black, bred by the first dark lord, Morgoth, during the first age. He is well known to be the greatest of all dragons in Tolkien's mythology and appears in the similar... Similar, similarian, 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 like yeah. similar, but it's a larian, similarian, similarian. He was said to be as big as a mountain and the largest dragon who ever existed. Like other dragons, he could breathe fire, which was said to be hotter than the flames of any other dragon. I wonder who's like, was there a guy standing there? Is like, hey man, this this dragon's fire is a lot warmer than the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> it's like five degrees warmer, so you know, at least, could... at least two, de two degrees Celsius. His breath was so hot it could melt and consume the rings of power, though not the one ring. Just, just so you know, not that ring, but the other rings. So his breath wasn't as hot as a volcano, is what they're saying. So, I guess it makes sense he's powerful as so a smog, he, but... he's from the Lord of the Rings uh, yeah. mythology. Now, the last dragon... Uh, was on a mountain. This guy has a hand on each mountain. So that's how yeah. big he is. <laughs> it's just like, these mountains are nothing. During the War of the Wrath, Arendil, piloting his similar Simmerel bearing ship. Slimmerel bearing <laughs> Vingulite. ship. Vingulite. Uh, you know Edlomarin what? These fantasy Yachlin, names, man. Uh, he was accompanied by the eagles of Manwe, fought and Caligon and the other dragons in battle and lasted an entire day. In death, when Anacon fell from the sky, the impact shattered the towers of Van Gogdrim, and an artificial volcanic mountain range larger than Mount Everest. The fall of Anilcon marked the end of the war against Morgoth. So, unlike the past dragons, this one died. Yeah. So, maybe not number nine. He's just big, but then again, King Ghidorah is big. So, like, you know. Who, wow. Who even, who even killed Wait, him again? So, some guy in a boat, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. Arendil, uh, piling a, a similar bearing ship, Vinglot, accompanied by the eagle and eagles. So a guy in a boat with some eagles. Uh, yeah, but the eagles him. in that universe are pretty big. They fought him and the other dragons. Lasted one day, then died. I don't he know. He must have been like of old age at that point. <laughs> I mean, come on. He he was tired. He just woke up. He wasn't really sure. Maybe what he, he was doing. just taking a nap. Who could actually like go to his heartbeat to listen to see if he was dead? Mm -hmm. Well, he's not immortal. Tell you that much. <laughs> and he's not. He he only has size on his on his side, really. 
I, I gotta say the picture that goes with it's pretty awesome. So it's a nice art rendition. Mm-hmm. Just imagine it. <laughs> Number eight, Seath the Scaleless. All right, all right. From Dark Souls. I don't know about this one. I don't know too much about this guy. And this is the guy, and I'm not gonna read anything here. But if I just take from memory, isn't he the one who? Uh, betrayed his brethren and told man that their weakness was lightning yes which technically means his weakness is lightning not very yes. tough uh king Ghidorah shoots lightning sometimes by the way so uh <laughs> there you go all right so let's see seat the skillless albino dragon from the first installment of dark souls he's one of the most important figures of the extensive lore of the games he was granted the title of duke by gwyn lord of sunlight for betraying his own kind and aiding the lords of the war in the war defeating the everlasting dragons. Thus helping end the Age of Ancients begin the Age of Fire. He was also given a fragment of the powerful Lord Soul. Mm. He was born albino dragon without the stone scales which granted the others of his kind of mortality. So he's not immortal. And the wily Seath found another way to achieve immortality. However, when he became undead by means of his research into the primordial crystal... Seath was driven insane by his research and now conducts hideous experiments in his crystal cave underneath his archives while surrounded by his crystalline creations. His servants, the Channelers, search Lordran for undead beings to take back into the Grand Archives and be subjected to Seath's experiments. He also commanded powerful sorcery, able to summon life from nothingness using his powers. It was this method he created the Moonlight Butterflies. Hmm. Seath is invincible upon the player's first encounter with him, and inevitably curses and kills the player during this encounter. To top it all off, Seath is responsible for the creation of sorcery in the world of Dark Souls. Is that true? Is he like, you can't kill him yes. the first time you and think? then you wake up in a cell. So here's the thing. You do kill him eventually. I forget how. You have to do something. Have you played the first Dark Souls? Mostly. I played the other two, but the first one I only played like half. So, like, you see some people, like, he must be an optional boss, because I've seen some people... He is not. He is one of the lords you have to beat. <laughs> so, like, I see these videos of people beat the game without dying. They hack. They they go through the wall, I think. Oh, okay. You, you have to use one of those things to beat him, I think. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Maybe I'm wrong. Or maybe they just don't count but he's supposed him to be, insta-killing you, you go as through, a death. You go through the wall, and he's invincible the first time. And you have to do something to make him uninvincible, which means he's killable. Not that strong. We're getting, we're getting weaker and weaker as we go. All right. Oh, Bahamut. He looks pretty. He looks pretty. He's buff. from Dungeons and Dragons. I thought he was from uh, Final Fantasy because the first time I was uh, shown Bahamut was from Final Fantasy VII back when I was which I think, came seven or eight. Which came first? Then Dungeons and Dragons definitely came first. They probably just like took an example of. Yeah. Do you want to go ahead and read this? Sure. One? Okay. So in Dungeons and Dragons, Bahamut is a powerful dragon deity, a child of the dragon god Lo. <laughs> I thought it said Lol for a second. And Lo. Child, <laughs> LOL. Child of the dragon god Lo. Uh, he is known as the Platinum Dragon and the King of the Good Dragons. As the deity of good dragon kind, he is the deity of wisdom, justice, law, and protection. All good dragons pay homage to Bahamut. And particularly gold, silver, and brass dragons hold him in high regard. He is said to possess silver white scales and blue cat like eyes, though his actual color changes according to his mood. His body is described as massive and sinuous. sinuous. Meaning god <laughs> sexy. <laughs> he does have a kind of a man shape, by the way. Yeah, he's pretty swole. He's a dragon head like kind of a man body. He's got like Six tails. He's got four arms. He's got oh, yeah, two he legs and a tail, and he's got like really cool looking. Uh, At least this picture wings. describes him as yeah. such. Uh, so Bahamut is a core god in the pantheon of Dungeons and Dragons, worshipped mainly by good paladins and clerics. What? Well, I guess this dragon is worshipped by a good he, pal. Okay, he's like surrounded by fire. He looks very okay. sinuous. So, and is capable of changing his shape into human or animal form to walk the mortal world. The race of dragonborn view him as their creator, god. Kings are crowned in his name, and other peoples invoke his rituals and prayers for protection and strength. He also has heightened senses. Being able to see, hear, smell, and touch within a distance of 10 miles. You can of touch a distance of 10 miles. 
his worshippers or his holy sites. He can touch anything 10 miles from his worshippers. Bahamut also has three devastating breath weapons. He can breathe ice, can turn any object into a gaseous form of itself, or use his disintegration breath to destroy everything in his path. His realm is a glittering palace that exists in a whirlwind between the first four layers of Mount Celestia, uh, Bahamut's antithesis, his evil twin sister Timat, Tiamat, Tiamat, I know, I, I'm pretty sure is the that's chromatic cool. dragon and the queen of evil dragons, with whom he is locked in an endless conflict. So, it seems like this creature is in Dungeons and Dragons and that and. I guess, like, with a game master, a guy who's, like, controlling the game. If you just really didn't like the players, it'd be like, you know what? That, <laughs> that random NPC you just hit, that was Bahamut walking in human form. <laughs> Actually. Good luck. <laughs> that goblin was Bahamut. So, yeah. I guess we shall just go home now. He's seen you coming from ten miles away and knew you would do this. No. But no, it's fine. He is powerful. He's immortal. He's a god. I mean... I mean, I gotta say... I, I don't know like what, what number are we on here? Uh, number number seven. Number seven. I don't I don't know if anything could be more powerful than him. Really, like he's like he's a he's a god. Well, maybe a Tiamat, <laughs> when he's in endless conflict. With. What you know what? That's true. I mean, if he was in endless conflict, they wouldn't be as strong. True. I, I'm I'm pumped for the if next one. If I was one. a summoner in the game, I would just summon Tiamat for everything. <laughs> if you could, I I mean, is that even possible? Can, can one even achieve uh, such a thing? I have no idea. I've never played the game. Oh. Uh, six. Uh, Nicol Bolas, Magic the Gathering. My friend plays this game. I've never gotten into it. I've tried a few times. Wait. You, know, you go ahead. Which one's Magic the Gathering? It's the card the game. Card game. Mm. Nicol Bolas is considered by fans to be one of the major antagonists of the Magic the Gathering lore. He's immortal, going by the name of the Forever Serpent, and a over 25,000 years old. He may be the oldest being in existence. I think in, all in the Magic other Gathering. dragons we've looked at have only been a few hundred years. So this one's 25,000 years well, old. Bahamut's probably like ancient though. Oh yeah, I guess so. He's probably there. And you like don't really know how old They didn't really is. say how old he was. That's true. Hey, King, G- King Ghidorah killed the, uh, the dinosaurs. That's way over 25,000 years. That's true. So. <clears throat> Immortal? Maybe. <laughs> Uh, he may be the oldest being in existence, not to mention one of the oldest immortals in any franchise, uh, King Adora. So, well, he's not immortal, though. His touch causes mind-shattering effects. He is one of the most powerful planeswalkers uh, oh. of the multiverse. And at one point, Borlas fought a demonic leviathan for an entire month in a battle that reduced the empire of Madra to a third of its original size, and tore open the first temporal rift. As if that wasn't enough, he then killed the Empress of Medra and res- reigned for 400 years as a god emperor of a country. I feel like it's a small feat for him, honestly. He could do much better things with his time. A demonic leviathan. He killed a small human <laughs> and then reigned over a small country. Well, like that was his maybe he days. didn't even notice. <laughs> he didn't <laughs> he know was the emperor. He was probably just going to his own thing, and people were like, "Hey, there's the emperor, guys." Why are people doing what I say? I don't understand. Uh, during the Dragon War, Nicolbolas emerged victorious as the most powerful of the five elder dragons to survive. Bolas is a master of the three of the five mana colors of magic: blue, black, and red. He has many lifetimes experience in manipulating these. With his formidable powers and unrivaled intellect, Bolas would easily be able to defeat most beings in the Magic the Gathering universe. I'm going to guess that he's probably a banned card. He probably can't use him. He's like, uh, yeah, I, I play uh, I play this guy, and uh, I win. He probably takes like a... Like a a sacrifice like a bunch of cards yeah it's you know, probably not like turn one it's like oh look here i put like 50 of his cards in my deck of 50 cards it <laughs> looks like i win he's the only card i got so uh here you go uh, i think you have to like 
play right. different lands and whatnot. Okay, so I know this Omega I, Shinron from Dragon Ball GT. No, I didn't watch that. The part. the worst out of the series. Everybody hates GT. Omega Shinron. Never yeah. heard of him. So he like from memory, he was from, because they were using the Dragon Balls throughout the Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. Apparently, a lot of them were negative wishes. So the negative energy from that basically was born the negative dragons for each one, one through seven. And then he huh. basically, I think he was just called Shenron. And then he abs absorbed all of the uh, Dragon Balls and became Omega Shenron. Wow. Yeah, so this uh, Super Yi Long... Long, commonly Z known as Zinglong. In... Zinglong? Yeah, I've never X heard that. X I N G. I think it's Zing. It must be the Japanese. Uh, Yi Zinglong. Name. Yeah, so known in the English dubs as Omega Shinron, is the final supervillain of Dragon Ball GT. Omega Shinron is the powered up version of the result of the Sen Shinron absorbing the Dragon Balls. See, that's I thought I remembered yeah. right. Into his being and corrupting them with his negative energy. He is the seventh and last of the shadow dragons formed from the buildup of the negative energy inside the Dragon Balls. He is a dragon of absolute destruction with the goal of destroying all life. He is easily able to defeat most of the main characters and was physically tearing the universe apart from the release of his negative energy. Omega was capable of regenerating when harmed to a great extent, even a direct hit from a times ten Kamehameha had no effect. Goku was unable to best Omega even with his full power Super Saiyan 4 form. Only Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta was able to stand up to him, to which he responded with a technique called Negative Karma Ball, described as the sum total of humanity's evil. In the end, it took a universal spirit bomb charged with the energy from across the entire universe to take him down. So, he is actually pretty powerful. I mean, if you look at the power scaling of the sayings and whatnot from the very first like episode, like he basically could destroy an entire universe in a second if he wanted to. But well, I, I'm pretty sure some of the other dragons we've seen on this list could do the same if they wanted. But he's not immortal. But how does he fare up against Beerus? I, what do you think? No, oh, beer. No, no contest. Beerus. Yeah. Well, there you go. There you have it. Number four, Akatosh, Elder Scrolls. So back, <laughs> back to God Dragon from Elder Scrolls here. Akatosh is many things to many people in the Elder Scrolls series. <laughs> the most of the population in Tamriel. He's the chief deity of the nine diviners or Adra. To the elven diviners? races. Diviners. He said, "Oh, the nine, nine divines. Nine divines." <laughs> nine divines. <laughs> nine divines. <laughs> To the elven race, he's, he's known as Outer Elf. Have you heard King of the of High Elves? <laughs> Have you heard of the High Elf? El King of Aldmer, or alternatively, Outer El, Time Dragon, King of the Gods. The dragons call him Bormahu, but whatever <laughs> name he is given by different religions and traditions, Akatosh is the most prominent god of the Cyrodiilic Empire in Elder Scrolls. Are those his feet? Are those I'm just kind of distracted. It's a low, like really, like cartoonish, low like render image feet. <laughs> of a fire dragon with big old chicken feet. Yeah, <laughs> looks like phoenix-like wings, with like very like nineteen thirties cartoonish feet, like spiral the dragon feet, yeah. <laughs> and uh, like a dragon head. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Elder Scrolls is generally considered to be the first deity to form. Akatosh is most commonly associated with the flow of time, and his avatar is depicted as a dragon, leading him to be called the Dragon God of Time. He's father of all dragons, including Alduin. Like all the Alda Adra, he's immortal, non corporeal, rarely interferes directly with the affairs of mortals. He's gotten associated with eternal life, endurance, invincibility, and duty. <laughs> duty. <laughs> the War of the West and the Dragon Breaks are thought to be the result of Akatosh temporarily losing control over time. At the end of the Oblivion Crisis, Martin Septim was able to use the Amulet of Kings to summon the spirit of Akatosh and become his avatar, the dragon made of fire. The avatar of Akatosh easily defeated the Draedric Prince, Merun's dragon, and banished him back to oblivion. 
That was my attempt at a Nord accent. What do you think? I give it like an 8 out of 10. Thank Not you. Not bad. Thank you. Not bad. All right. So, like, basically, he could defeat anybody he wants. All right. Number three. <gasps> Diablo! Diablo! Uh, <laughs> so, Tathomet, uh, according, yeah. Yeah, according to uh, various myths in the Diablo universe, Tathomet was formed when Anu, the first being to exist, tried to cast out all evil from himself to achieve the state of purity. These elements coalesced into a seven-headed dragon that was the sum total of all evil. Anu and Tamat then battled between themselves for countless eons until their energies were depleted. It ended when they both delivered final blows of light and darkness so terrible that it created the universe and killed them both. Tamat is an impressive dragon to begin with, being the manifestation of ultimate primordial evil. On top of this, he is the prognicator of hell itself. After his death, his blackened corpse fell down into the darkest corners of reality, and the realm of the burning hells was born from it. The race of demons was spawned like maggots from his remains, and his seven heads spawned the great evils. Oh, wow. But this was all told back in the days of youth when Diablo wasn't even around yet. Diablo was just a head. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> Did you know that the primordial evils are actually just dragon heads? <laughs> Thanks, uh, old man. Stay a while and listen. Wait, where are you going? <laughs> Stay a while and listen. All right, number two, Deathwing. Oh, the, I, I feel like that's a downgrade from Tiamat, the universe creator. Yeah, right. Go ahead. All right, all right. Deathwing, the destroyer, is one of the five dragon aspects of the MMORPG World of Warcraft and the leader of the Black Dragon Flight. When Deathwing came out of the very crust of the world of Azeroth itself, his arrival reshaped the world through earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and floods. You know, I didn't create the universe or anything, but, you know, he had some earthquakes. Oh, earthquakes. So it's leaving out some uh, important lore behind this guy. I know a little bit. I played World of Warcraft quite a bit. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> hit me some lore. Yeah, so the it's talking about the five dragon aspects here, and I won't go into great detail of all of them, but the uh, world was basically made by the titans and then they were like okay we're gonna go off and make other worlds now so we're gonna make these dragon flights and then they gave them basically each like kind of like a little bit of power of their own mm -hmm. and the black dragon flight was given the power of earth but the titans had sealed the old gods into earth and since deathwing was the aspect of earth he heard whispers from the old gods and basically became maddened from them. Oh. And uh, he became corrupted by madness. And he tricked the other dragon aspects of putting their uh, energies into something called the demon soul. And he tried to use the demon soul to bring, I think to break out the uh, old gods. But that plan was thwarted. By hey. the player? Uh, no. Well, yes and no. It was like, I believe either in Warcraft 2 or Warcraft 3 uh, that happened. Mm. But I believe it was sent through time. It was kind of like with the dragon from Skyrim. They kind of like right. sent it forward in time. All, all the one. Yeah. All the win. And so basically the player had to go... I think either forward or back in time. I think it was a forward in time to get it, to use it to to defeat him. I'll probably talk about that. Well, let's see. Later. Whole parts of the world ended up underwater or permanent volcanic fissures were yes. ripped open. So he was sealed in the earth, and he broke out, and this is what happened. It basically like caused a cataclysm of the world. Known as the Shattering of the Cataclysm. Yep. Death Ring, for all intents and purposes, unstoppable. Uh, no force on Azeroth could destroy him. He was only defeated by other dragons sending adventurers back in time. Back no one could destroy him, but time-traveling adventurers, of course. That's right. Seizing the dragon's soul before... Oh, I see. So they killed him when he was a baby. Seizing the soul before Neroth 
Nithron, uh, the World Destroyer, Deathwing's former monkier, could, oh, before he could, and bringing it back to use against him. Without this action, Deathwing would have destroyed the world afterward. The other dragon aspects were drained of their power, having used it to destroy him. Uh, Deathwing is several millennia old. Oh, that's, that's, that's pretty long. I guess that beats out uh, King Ghidorah in terms of age. Uh, with enormous physical and magical power. In-game, he has... Uh, 858 million HP. I see. The highest of any character. He is also... He also has control of the land, including magma and lava, and can easily withstand the temperatures inside volcanoes. According to lore, though, Cataclysm was stopped. The world still feeling the effects of Deathwing's return. It's actually pretty cool because uh, I remember in one of the dungeons, you're actually in an alternate time where he, like, he was successful and he won. And when the old gods were released, they basically impaled him on top of a tower killing him. Whoa. So you see his like basically see him like dead No, in the no, background. Deathwing's just a victim. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a victim. Giant dragon killing everything. Called Deathwing. <laughs> and number one, Meg Ledroth, the Void Dragon, Warhammer forty K. Oh nice. You know Warhammer was the one that started off a lot of uh different lore. Like, I, will... I think World of Warcraft was born from it. I don't want to say that Dungeons and Dragons was born from it, but they're very similar. If it was easier to get into, I might get into it. But it's, it's, it's a lot to... Well, there's like the fantasy. Like there's like the Vermintide. Right. And then you go to... Maybe this is in the future, but there's a future one too where they're like... Space Marine space one? Space Marines and whatnot. Yeah. Well, funny enough, I can't scroll down. So I guess we only have this one sentence. What? <laughs> it's not. It, Maybe, it's, are you like, are you? Zoom, oh, oh, wait. There, oh, we, go. there we go. Okay. So Mag, Magladroth. Magladroth. Okay. I think. So he's called the Void Dragon. He is the most powerful of the Sithen and the Star Gods, godlike beings in the Warhammer 4K universe. It is one of the few remaining deities in the Milky Way galaxy. It is said to be master of the mer material realm associated with oblivion and devastation. He regularly turns into a cloud of dark light and consumes stars. So like a black hole, I guess. Being the most powerful of all the star gods, it has the ability to create invincible warriors capable of channeling lightning into their opponents. Magladroth is believed by some tech priests to be an actual machine god worshipped by the cult of machine of the Adotius Mechanius. Some of the tech priests believe that the Void Dragon is the same as the unknown entity called the Dragon of Mars, who is imprisoned beneath the surface of Mars by the man who would become known as the God Emperor of Mankind by the 31st millennia. The dragon of Mars still lies imprisoned beneath the Noctus Labyrinthus, and is its true nature remains a mystery, though the description of it gives many clues pointing toward it being a star god. If true, this would mean not even the god emperor of mankind could kill the void dragon. At one point, an ancient gem that is theorized by the fan base to be the shard of Magladron, Mardroth was found by the Necron Here it comes. Atri Atrike dynasty after assaulting the elder world of Silentia to obtain it. To obtain it, though, it was only a single shard of the Void Dragon it had managed to lay waste to the dynasty and consumed a dozen worlds in mindless rage. Perhaps even more frightening, some theorize that Magladroth is the only Scythian to never be shattered into shards and may be slumbering intact beneath the, sl the surface of Mars, which is terrifying prospect should it ever be awakened again. These qualities make Magdroth the Void Dragon the most powerful dragon of all of fiction. But is it immortal? 
It's very I, strong, but I, is well, it immortal? If it's a machine, technically, yes. Oh. Uh, I mean, it has no life. How do you kill that which has no life? <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't. I guess. I guess he's the most powerful. Well, I mean, I can't really. Just imagine if you're playing a game, right? Playing like a Dungeons Dragons game. Mm-hmm. And you get to the end while you're going through a dungeon. And uh, this is your final boss. <laughs> you're like, all right, guys, give it a roll. You had a tough time defeating a team of orcs. Now for the final boss. Oh, what's that? The Star Eater Dragon God Machine? Um, <laughs> Magdala Droth, the Void Dragon. is. <laughs> we can't beat this. This is your boss. You can, but only if you roll all 20. 